in the last lecture we said that in CHP or in combined heat and power when we are going to use it or when we are going to apply it we have to check whether it's going to save your money and the amount of energy that you are using in the traditional way and I said that one important factor which has to be considered is that heat to power ratio in that example our heat to power ratio was almost 1 there the heat requirement was 40.2 while the power requirement was 40 and at this point the efficiency of CHP was around the 80.2 that is this is efficiency in traditional or the efficiency of the traditional way was about 52 percent so the efficiency was increased by around 28 percent or roughly 30 percent now let's see what is going to happen if the heat to power ratio is increased up to so we can say that now here the heat requirement is about 80 while the power requirement is maintained at 40 so if you are going to use the same CHP plant or the same diesel engine then we are going to get only 40.2 heat and 40 power or roughly for from here onward because for the simplicity we are going to consider only 40 so if we are going to use the same diesel engine it will give us 40 heat units and 40 power units but our requirement now is 8 heat units and 40 power units we can do two things we can use two diesel engines then we are going to get 80 heat units and another 40 or another 80 power units normally the diesel engines target is to provide power and heat is something which is there as a waste and we are going to recover it so if you are going to use two diesel engines we are losing not uh, 40 energy units therefore that is not going to be a suitable one therefore what we can do is we can use the same CHP plant or the same diesel engine and it will give us 40 it will give us the CHP will give us 40 heat units and 40 power units and we have to find another 40 heat units somehow so in the traditional way we used a boiler to get this amount of heat so we can use a boiler here to get the additional 40 units this is how what we are going to work if the heat to power ratio is increased up to 2 so the efficiency of the CHP plant is 80.2 or roughly 80 percent because we are going to consider about this 40 not 40.2 
So in order to get this amount of energy where heat is 40 and uh, where the heat is 40 and power is 40 then the input energy for this one will be around 100 because NCHP alone is 80 but what is the efficiency of the boiler N boiler was uh, was around 82 so if you are going to have 40 energy units here then we might uh, require another something around 49 this is rough value something around 49 energy units so the total input is 149 and the output is 80 plus 40 that is 120 so the new efficiency is 120 divided by 140 that is something around well uh, well that is about uh, 80.5 so actually we have slightly increased our efficiency of the new CHP plant with a previous diesel engine and a new boiler. Now let's consider what is going to happen if we use the same traditional one with this heat to power ratio about 2. Then our heat requirement is 80 and power requirement is 40. Earlier this was in the earlier situation this was about 40 and 40 and there our input energy was 150 Hundred and fifty four and three. This is for forty and forty, right? And we have another heat forty units, and in order to get that, our input energy should be this value that is forty nine. So here the new efficiency is 120 divided by 154.3 plus 49. That is 120 divided by 0.3 is here. Two hundred three point three. That is something around. 59 now here we have to think right earlier when the heat to power ratio was 1 the efficiency of the CHP system was 80 and the efficiency of the traditional system was 52 where we increased our efficiency by 28 percent but now the new system NCHP is about 80.5 the same value right but N traditional is 59 so here we have increased the efficiency 
by about 21 to 22 percent. So, when the heat to power ratio has changed, the amount of savings that we are going to make has also been changed. In fact, at this situation, the savings has been reduced. So, which means the time taken for the payback period is going to be increased. Therefore, when we are going to implement a CHP system, we have to check whether how much of energy that we are going to save and in terms of money as well. So heat to power ratio is a very vital one. Normally for the diesel engines, heat to power ratio is optimum around 1 but this can change from situation to situation. Therefore, for further consideration or further, for further uh, reading, you should read the section 8.44 further understanding with regarding this issue.